Oh hi, I watched three films in the span of two days all at the theater. Now besides the fact that I have way too much time on my hands, I was interested in how each of the films that I watched all dealt with family in multiple different ways. So let's put our analysis caps on. Kenny, you're gonna put that on in post, right? Cool. First was the obnoxiously long titled Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And it stars Frances McDormand, who plays equal parts grieving mother and absolute badass. The setup was that her daughter was murdered and the culprit was never caught. So she pays for these three billboards outside her small town to shame the local police department. And what's remarkable about this story is that it's not about a bumbling police department or even a corrupt police department, but rather two sides that want to do the right thing, but keep butting heads anyway. And by the end, we see the character that Frances McDormand plays ready to do anything to enact some form of justice, to the point where her morals are corrupted trying to honor her dead daughter. It's heartbreaking to see how grief can corrupt our sense of right and wrong. By the end, she only wants retribution at the expense of her living family. Grief can either bring a family closer together or tear it apart. I highly recommend watching this movie to see how it plays out. The second film I watched was called Lady Bird. It's the new film by Greta Gerwig and it stars uh, Swaris Ronan, I think is how you say her name. I'm sorry, I can barely pronounce my own name. This is a phenomenal film, although it does check off a lot of boxes that I adore. It's a coming of age story, it's funny, it has a healthy dose of heart, literal heart. I eat at least one human heart every day keeps you regular. In actuality, this follows a teenager who calls herself Lady Bird and her struggle to find her place in the world. She wants to escape her family who she finds confining and move to a, a more cultured place like New York or New Hampshire. Her relationship with her mother is the most fascinating and it's played brilliantly by Laurie Metcalf. She obviously loves her daughter, but because of her own insecurities, is often passive aggressive and kind of talks down to the dreams of her daughter. I don't think that there are any surprises in this film. It's just a movie that's done exceptionally well. But there is a quote that I truly identify with that comes near the end of the film. As Lady Bird distances herself from her family, she realizes how important they actually are. The quote is this, People go by the names that their parents give them, but they don't believe in God. And as silly as that might sound out of context, I think that there's a lot to unpack there. Firstly, both may seem ridiculous. Why believe in this spirit in the sky? And why do we go by these names that were assigned to us at birth that we had no say in? But by the end, Christine, her real name, realizes that there is a bit of comfort in the boringness of her family. That culture does not necessarily mean good. I loved this film. Lastly, I watched Coco, the newest Pixar film, and I'm not gonna lie, I ugly cried in the middle of a bunch of parents and their kids, and I greatly wish I could say that that was a first. This movie is all about honoring the past, not forgetting where you came from, and making sure that you take the time to remember all those family members who came before you. And I think that it's no great mystery why I had such a strong reaction to this cartoon. With my grandmother recently passing away, I understand why you want to hold those people close to your heart. I love that they focused on Mexican culture, a place that I'm not super familiar with, but it proves that Hollywood can make interesting and engaging stories from different points of view. They just choose not to most of the time. Miguel, our protagonist, is a secret musician. His family has outlawed music music years ago because of his great-grandfather's decision to leave his family and never come back. With a little help of a curse and some movie magic, Miguel finds himself in the land of the dead where he has to go on this quest to get permission, the blessing, from his family to become the musician that he wants to be. No spoilers, but for me there were some surprises along the way and this is one of the darker animated films from the last few years. I also want to shout out the music, which they pulled from a lot of different Mexican influences, but they also do something that I adore that many musicals do. They take a piece of music and then present it to you in many different ways. So specifically, there's this song called Remember Me, which the very first time you hear it is this triumphant, romantic song sung by this Lothario. And the second time, we're introduced to it. It's a lullaby sung by a father to his adoring little daughter. And then the last time we hear it, it's almost this dirge. It's Miguel singing it to someone to really, truly don't forget them 
or they're going to be lost forever. Miguel's journey takes him from a disruptor to becoming a unifier. He realizes over the course of this movie that he can honor his family and celebrate them instead of thinking that he has to escape them. Family is important. I know that's a bold statement, but whether that's your biological family or your adopted family, those people who you hold in the highest regard in your life, these three movies explore that concept in multiple different ways, but the end result is the same. Family is important. They are all strong films, but if I was forced to rate them from best to good, I would go Ladybird, Coco, Three Billboards. But I'd love to hear your interpretations. Have you seen any of these films? What were your thoughts? How wrong am I? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Kyle. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday, and if you want to help donate to the cause, consider becoming a patron over on my Patreon page. Now, maybe I should sing a little bit from Remember Me. N no, no. <clears throat> Not at all.